Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's subject, which I'm calling 10 tips to get your house service ready. But before I dive into that, I wanted to make sure I realized that I don't think I'd mention that we launched the Dear Billionaire podcast. And I think that for me, this is my moment of full circle where I've taken all the information that I've learned from chiefs of staff and private service professionals, and I'm putting it back out into the universe for wealthy homeowners to learn what they can do to improve their privacy, their service, and to get the house um, maintenance uh, the way they want it. And so I hope that you will go over to your favorite podcast channel and listen, there's uh, a few episodes up now, and I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear what you want to know about, and we'll just continually point the conversation in both directions for how to improve win-win relationships with domestic staff and the employers who make our paychecks. So anyway, let's let's get back to this week's focus. Uh, getting your house service ready is kind of an issue that I've known about in the back of my mind for a really long time. And for some reason, I just have never focused on it until recently. And I am, it's just, it's pivotal information, truly, for those in private service. Uh, so, and I'm continually surprised when I walk into really big houses and the estate manager or the house manager is working at their laptop on the kitchen table <laughs> or on the dining room table. And I find that uh, many times these are the same houses where there might be nine bedrooms and some of the beds have never been slept in. So let's let's look into that and see uh, what it's going to take to get your house service ready. Now, my new millionaire clients, I don't know if anyone's offended by that uh, naming or pointing out, but my my new wealth clients oftentimes have the opinion that why would I give up space for my household staff in my own home? But really seasoned employers understand that the longer you have house full-time household staff, the more turning over part of your house actually benefits you. So with maximum service, with privacy, and a separation of all of the elements that it takes to provide private service um, and gives you back your home uh, in a more private way. So if you've ever felt like you live in Grand Central Station and you struggle for privacy in your own home, it's probably because there's a really large number of contractors that it takes to keep your house running smoothly. They, they're going to ring a doorbell. They need to be let in. They need to have an introduction to what's going on in the house that day. Uh, there needs to be some assurance that they understand what private, uh, property protection measures are needed before they start their work. And just setting them up for the day takes, takes a little bit of time and a lot of conversation. Your house also likely needs a lot of products and supplies and deliveries. So every time <laughs> FedEx or UPS comes to your home, you're likely to get a doorbell ring. You're likely to get um, an announcement or a package that needs to be dealt with so that you don't leave it on the front porch too long. And the other side of this is it's likely that you have a fair amount of laundry that needs to be flushed through the, the washer dryer cycle 
uh, on a sometimes daily basis, depending on how busy your household is. So not only is there noise from laundry facilities and dryer buzzers that uh, need attention, but your household staff needs to go back and forth to rotate the loads and fold the laundry and, and put everything back up in the closet. So if this sounds familiar, it's no wonder that you don't want to invite more household staff into your life. Although you may need or want additional service, that, that's always the push-pull hesitation. How much can I put up with or how much privacy do I need to give up to get the service that I need to get the house managed in the way that I want it? So oftentimes when I'm doing a two-day site visit, I'm focused on collecting household information. I'm focused on uh, interviewing the staff to see what they do all day, what their challenges are, and where we can look at some efficiencies. But I'm usually distracted by what seems to be an inevitable question, which is, where is your service room? Where is your service wing? Where do uh, the operations of your household happen? And these homes are, for the most part, uh, there's regular housekeeping services, there's regular contractors visits, and there's regular supplies and, and laundry to be filtered through. So providing your staff with those separate facilities, as well as a place for meetings for them, a place for teamwork development, a place to have their lunch. Uh, a room to go into where they can make uh, private phone calls and texts where they're not bothering you. They still need to stay connected to their personal life. And oftentimes they need a place uh, for break time, for lunch time. And that's a different conversation. Hopefully you're um, complying with state and federal guidelines related to that. Um, but it gets them out of your personal space to do that type of work. Um, let's look at some suggestions for how to prepare your house for service ready criteria. And of course, the first uh, suggestion that I'm going to make, there are 10, is to designate a portion of your house to household uh, management office or staff quarters. This could be an entire wing of your house, depending on the size. It could be a closet inside of the garage. Yes, I've seen it. And in some really high-end homes, it could be a garage apartment, or it could be just a room within your house. Number two, ideally this space has a separate entrance. So you're not hearing the coming and going of all of this activity. Um, there's There may be phones ringing and there may be packages being delivered and unwrapped and, and inventoried. And it allows that uh, to happen not in, under your nose. Um, the other part of this location is that your house manager has a desk that overlooks the front entry gate or, and or the front door so that they can troubleshoot some issues with people who are, are on your property but maybe parking improperly or maybe people who shouldn't be on your property that um, they need to head off at the pass. Uh, number four, a Second kitchen is a big benefit to you. This, of course, provides uh, a chef for an out-of-the-way location to prepare meals for you, either during guest visits, daily meal preparation, or um, during special events where you may not want service in your main kitchen. And certainly when your guests arrive, if everyone wants to sit around in their PJs, breakfast could still be delivered um, from behind the scenes. So that's 
that's a real, it's a big ticket item. However, it's got big benefits for the homeowner. And then in addition to that, staff likely meet, eats every meal at your property while they're working. And so this gives them a place to heat their lunch or a coffee bar, soft drinks or snacks. But realize it benefits you to keep staff on your property instead of running to Starbucks at lunch and, and grabbing a, a, a bit of cappuccino or something. Um, think about having number five, think about having a bed and a bathroom with a shower. So let's say you've got a big event and it runs until midnight. Your household staff likely does not live nearby and therefore they're cleaning up until two o'clock in the morning. Um, they've got, uh, they've had a long day. And do you really want them on the road at 2 a.m., hoofing it back home and then turning around and coming back the next day um, a little frazzled? So if you give, if you provide a bed and a shower, you are looking out for their ultimate safety and health concerns when you need them the most during big events. Uh, we talked about the laundry service. Number six is separate laundry facilities in this staff area. This will pay off in dividends in that they can keep things running smoothly uh, behind the scenes and it's not under your nose. And back and forth of keeping things running through the washer dryer cycle uh, happens really without your knowledge, which is great. Um, I suggest number seven, getting staff lockers. This gives everyone a place to lock their personal belongings in for the day. And I realize that you probably have zero to none theft at your property. However, it does happen. And you want to give your staff a safe place to stash their things so that this never becomes an issue for you. Uh, get a conference table, number eight. This is where your staff comes together, builds teamwork and rapport. It also doubles as a clothing folding station. You could do a gift wrapping table here. Uh, maybe you've got charcuterie um, prep and food prep before an event. So a conference table is a huge win. Also, number nine, get a, cat, a couch or a lounge chair where everyone, think about this, they've probably been on their feet all day long. Break time, they get a chance to put their feet up, they can return their personal text and just have a place to rest up and then keep going the rest of the day. And then number 10, a safe or a locking cabinet. Now, if your house doesn't have a safe, get two, <laughs> one for yourself, Maybe it goes in your master closet or your master bedroom suite. Put a lock on the door so that you can secure your personal bedroom space during events or when you're away at vacation. Sometimes contractors wander into the wrong area and you want to keep them out. You want to leave that um, as a designated private area. But also get a safe or a locking cabinet for your house manager. So they have a place to put their HR documents, uh, petty cash um, stash, your passports, your car titles, or any other personal items. Uh, your, your safe should also have petty cash and all of your prized watches and, and jewelry. So the results of these 10 steps will absolutely make your life easier, your life more private and keep your house running smoothly. You'll be able to not only gain back some privacy in your own home, but you're telling your staff that you value them, that you honor their contribution to your peaceful household and it's really, really a win-win situation. Now, before I close, here's your pro tip. 
if you are renovating your home, and I have seen this numerous times with multi-million dollar renovations, if your master bedroom is right above the kitchen, send your drawings back to the architect. Find someone who is skilled with homes that need service and staff and make sure that you have separation from your master suite wing and your loudest kitchen uh, activity. Because after a big event, let's say you've got a dinner party and your staff is cleaning up until two o'clock in the morning, you do not want to hear the dishwasher getting unloaded and the recycling bin being emptied when you're trying to get some sleep. Also, uh, you want to look at separate entrances so that you can have stealth service as much as possible. I've seen houses with separate entrances to the master suite so the housekeeping staff can get up uh, and do a sweep, make the bed, sanitize the bathrooms, put away the clothes while you're at meals so that they don't have to walk through the center of the house. Uh, but also during events or even just a dinner party, have a separate entrance for dish service, beverage service, restocking bars, and serving meals. Every, everyone will be happier. Everything will be more peaceful when your staff isn't using the same entrance as your guest. That's what I have this week. Thank you so much for listening and make sure that you're listening to the Dear Billionaire podcast. Thank you.